Have you ever made a change inside your Google Ads account and then instantly regretted it? Maybe your ROAS dropped, maybe sales fell off a cliff, or maybe you just had that uncomfortable feeling in your gut like, did I just break something that was working? Don't worry, it's happened to the best of us and that's exactly why today's video is so important. Because I'm going to show you how to test your Google Ads changes in a safe and scientific way without risking your existing performance. We are talking about the experiments feature inside Google Ads today, and once you understand how to use it properly, it's going to become one of the most powerful tools you can use for improving the performance in your account. Now, I've been doing this for a while now. I run a Google Ads agency called BigFlip. We've generated over $150 million in e-commerce revenue using Google Ads for our clients. And experiments are something we use regularly with our clients to test big changes without gambling the account. So let me show you how it works. All right, first things first, what exactly is a Google Ads experiment? In simple terms, it's a way to split test changes in your campaign setup side by side and see which version performs better. It's built right into Google Ads and it allows you to duplicate a campaign, make one change to the new version and then run it alongside the original. Google will then split the traffic between them, usually a 50-50 split by default, and then show you which one is actually winning. So instead of, I think this change will work, you'll have actual data so you can say, I know this works better. It's proper A-B testing for your campaigns and with far less risk than just editing a live campaign that's already working. Now, some of you might be thinking at this point, well, hang on, Daryl, can't I just duplicate the campaign myself, make the change in the new campaign and then run both versions at the same time? Well, yeah, you can do that, but it's not a proper A-B test. And here's why. When you run two separate campaigns side by side, Google doesn't actually split the traffic evenly or cleanly. The audiences can overlap and there's no guarantee of a fair or even budget split. In fact, what often happens is that Google just favors one of the campaigns, usually the one that starts off stronger, and then it pushes more of the budget there. So now you've got two campaigns with uneven spend, overlapping audiences, and no clear result. Experiments, on the other hand, solve all of that. They create a clean traffic split with no overlap in audiences, and they distribute the budget exactly how you set it, like 50-50 or 70-30 or whatever you want. And when you look at the results, you're comparing apples to apples. It's a controlled environment, and that means you can actually trust the data. So when and why should you use experiments? Well, a good rule of thumb is, if your campaign is already performing and you're planning to make a big change, it's a perfect moment to test it with an experiment. Experiment. Let me give you some examples. For example, you might want to try switching from maximize conversions to target ROAS. Or perhaps you're thinking about testing broad match instead of Fraser Exact. Or maybe you want to test performance max versus standard shopping. Or maybe you're testing new ad copy, videos, or landing pages. All of those things can have a big impact, good or bad. So rather than just making the change and hoping for the best, run an experiment. Okay guys, so to set up a campaign experiment from within your Google Ads login, you want to come over here to the left-hand sidebar and click into the campaigns section and then click on experiments over here. So this is where you'll be able to see all the different types of experiments that you can run. So it's sort of broken down by category. You've got custom experiments, ad variations, performance max experiments, demand gen experiments, experiments and video experiments. And then down here, you're also going to see a track record of all the previous experiments you've run and the results that they got. So you can see here, oh, this experiment got minus 30% conversions. Obviously, we didn't run that experiment afterwards. After the experiment had finished, this was a loser. So we didn't keep on using it. We just went back to the original because it showed that it didn't work. And this is why you want to run experiments rather than just making changes in your campaign. If we just made the change in the campaign, then we would have had 30% less conversions with the change and we wouldn't have had an easy way to backtrack and go back to the original version. So anyway, step one is to come to the custom experiments section. Uh, this is where you can get the most flexible type of experiment to run. And if you click the plus button here, you're going to have a few options here 
for the type of experiment you can build. Now, oftentimes I'm just gonna go for the custom experiment. Again, this is the most flexible type. And then you can select your campaign type and you do just have to select between display or search. Video, you can actually run video experiments, but it's over here now. They just kind of moved it into a different place. So that option there is now grayed out. Don't know why they didn't just get rid of that option, but anywho, the video experiments are possible. They're just over here. So let's click a search experiment and then you can Ex you can give your experiment a name. So, uh, you know, let's say ad theme test. Uh, let's say we were just testing different ad copy themes. So uh, ad theme test July 2025. You might normally date it as well. And then you need to select a base campaign. So you can click the pencil icon here and then select an initial campaign to be the original arm of the test. So let's just select one of my campaigns here like that. And then you have the option here for the trial campaign. So we'll create a copy of the campaign selected above in the next step. Make sure necessary changes for this experiment are there. So suffix for the treatment name, uh, you can customize this. Uh, as you need. That's just going to get added on to the experiment version of this campaign. This campaign is going to get duplicated and then the duplicate, it will be the experiment part and it will have this text added on the end. Uh, and it's fine to just keep that. I just normally just keep that. Uh, it usually matches the experiment name up here. So there you can see it's going to be named like that. Okay, so let's save and continue. There you have it. The experiment is now mostly set up, but now we actually just need to go in and make changes. So the original campaign is already there. We're not going to make any changes to the original campaign. Remember, the idea is to only make changes in the experiment campaign so you can measure the impact. And now we've created the duplicate campaign here. Uh, this is all in draft mode at the moment. Afterwards, we can schedule this for uh, running within specific dates. So don't worry, this isn't actually live yet. Now what you want to do is go into your experiment campaign and make the change that you want to change. So let's say you're going to change ad copy or bid strategy in the settings. So uh, I won't do that bit with you right now because this is going to, that's going to be different for everyone. You need to decide what you're actually testing and then make that change in the experiment campaign. So for now, let's just progress on as if I've already made a change in my experiment campaign and I'm ready to go. So then the next thing you want to do is click schedule. And then you can put in your experiment goals up here. So select a metric. Let's say I want to test cost per conversion increase. Uh, sorry, let's go for decrease. Let's say I'm aiming for a CPA decrease. Uh, and let's say I was also looking for a cost increase. So be specific and add in which metrics you're actually looking for a result in, and then add in the type of result that you are looking for. And then here you can select the exact budget split that you want to put into the experiment arm. So if you are being like really, really careful, you might bring it all the way down here. Um, and that's like, if you might bring it all the way down here to like 10%, and then that way a lot less traffic and a lot less spend is going to go into your trial. It's a lot safer, but also the rub here is that with a lot less traffic and spend, there's going to be lower conversions, which means it's going to take a lot longer to get to a statistically significant result. On the other end of the spectrum, if you go like bullish and say, oh, I want to do 90% of my budget into the test, uh, then you'll get data really quickly on the testing part of the experiment, but you will get data really slowly on the base. The base will only have 10. So normally I would just go for a 50-50. Uh, and then if you want to be cautious, uh, then maybe go for like 40-60. Uh, but I normally aim for somewhere in the middle right? Just to give an even budget split. And then you're just going to want to be watching the results very closely to see what happens with performance after you launch. Uh, there's some advanced options here. I would just leave it with cookie based. So that's fine. You can select a start date. Normally I set these up like right when I'm looking to start. I don't schedule these for the future, but you can schedule it to go out in the future if you want to. Uh, you can set a specific end date here, so you can do duration or you can put a specific date. And then here you can uh, enable or disable sync. 
And what sync will do is it makes sure that if you do make any changes to the base campaign, not the trial campaign, if you make changes to the base campaign, those changes will automatically be copied into the trial campaign. Because remember, the trial campaign needs to be an exact duplicate of the base campaign with the only difference being whatever it was you were looking to test, whether it was bid strategy or landing pages or ad copy or whatever. So this is actually quite a useful feature just in case you accidentally touch something or you want to touch something in the base campaign. Maybe you want to add a new keyword or maybe you want to customize some ad copy. The sync mode will sync those changes so that that way your test, your Google Ads experiment will continue to be a fair experiment where the only difference is the thing you were testing. So then you click create experiment and then you are done. And then that puppy is going to go and run on your scheduled date. Now let's talk about some of the best types of experiments you can actually run. These are things that we do all the time for our clients at my agency. So number one, ad copy testing in search campaigns. This is a super low risk way to boost your CTR and conversion rate. Try a variation of your headline, a new call out or rework your benefit messaging. Number two, bid strategy tests. One of the most important ones you can do. For example, testing maximize conversion value versus using target ROAS. Each strategy behaves differently depending on your goals, so it's best to test rather than assume. Number three, performance max uplift experiments. This one's great if you haven't rolled out Pmax yet, if you're currently running search shopping and or display campaigns separately. This experiment lets you test whether moving to Pmax gives you better performance without having to go all in on Pmax first. Okay, so you're keen on running some experiments in your account. Here are a few important tips to get you on the right track. Tip number one, only change one thing. Don't change your bid strategy and your ads and your audiences all at the same time in one experiment because you won't know what caused the result. Keep your tests nice and clean. Tip number two, run it for long enough. You ideally want at least 30 to 50 conversions on each arm of the test before you call a winner. Google will even show you whether the results are statistically significant, so don't judge too early. Tip number three, define your KPI or key performance indicator up front. Whether it's ROAS or CPA or conversion volume, know what it is that you're trying to improve before you launch the test. Tip number four, stick it out. Early results can be noisy. Performance often swings in the first few days, so be patient and wait for reliable data before you make any decisions. And final tip, apply the winner. Once you've got a clear result and a clear winner, do actually apply that change to the main campaign. Don't let your winning test variant just sit there gathering dust. You'd be surprised how often people accidentally do that. Experiments are great, but they are not perfect. Let me quickly walk you through a few limitations to be aware of. First, custom experiments are the most flexible type of experiment. You can use them to test pretty much anything like bidding, targeting, ad copy, landing pages, whatever. But here's the catch. They only work on search and display campaigns. You can't run a custom experiment on shopping or performance max, which is a bit of a shame because being able to split test bid strategies on Pmax would have been super valuable. There are a few built-in Pmax experiments, but they are more limited. For Pmax, you can test the potential uplift of adding a Pmax campaign, the overall performance of Pmax compared to shopping, search or display, or you can test specific Pmax features. There are only actually two features you can test right now in this section, and one of them is auto-created assets, and the second one is manual assets. The second one is actually quite useful for a lot of e-commerce businesses that might be running feed-only Pmax, because with this test type here, you can safely test if adding assets into Pmax is better or worse than going feed only. So yeah, you can test some stuff for Pmax, but it is pretty limited and you don't have the full range of options, unfortunately. You can't test different asset group structures, audience signals, bidding strategies, or anything else really for Pmax. So clearly there are some Pmax experiment limitations there, and I do hope Google fixes this in the future. So to wrap this all up, don't guess, test. Experiments let you test your ideas properly without tanking your performance. And the best advertisers, they are always testing. Properly optimizing Google Ads for growth can be a confusing and time-intensive process. I do try and teach you everything you need to know here on my YouTube channel, but 
for those of you who are looking to work with a team of Google Ads pros who can do all of this for you, do feel free to check out the link in the description below this video. On the link, you'll be able to book a time to talk with yours truly, and we can explore whether my agency can help you scale your business with Google Ads. All right, thanks for watching, guys, and I hope to see you on the next one.